Now again, I double click on this open border edge to select my edge loop, and I'm going to extrude this back into the eye. So I continue working here, I'm going to add yet another edge loop, this time to trace where the crease of the upper and lower eyelids are. And you'll see I should have some pretty defined creases that I can work with uh, in a uh, photographic source. And that's what I'm trying to essentially build from, looking at those points. There we go. You'll notice how my upper eyelid crease is much closer to the actual eye than my lower eyelid crease is, and that should be the case. That makes sure, unless you've got some very heavy bags under your eyes, you're really going to want to make sure that you have your creases set up like that. And using a, another edge loop here, I can massage these vertices out again, making them a little bit wider and further away from each other on the lower section of the eye and a little bit closer and tighter on the upper section of the eye. This is a general rule you can use when creating structures. If you want more creasing, just put two edge loops closer together. And if you want them to be more rounded and less creased, pull them a little bit further apart. Uh, and I'm using just that idea here, just like I did on the lips, to help do some definition for my eyes. And again, you can see with uh, not too much going on so far, we're already starting to get the look of this face settled by figuring out the eyes and the mouth first. Uh, those are, I think, the most important features. Uh, we could then go into some of the less important features, uh, like the forehead and the cheeks, uh, which, while on their own, do have some very large anatomical concerns, really don't tell the story of the face as deeply as the eyes and the mouth usually can. Yet another edge loop here allows me to create a little bit more creasing. And in the corners of the eye as well, uh, you're going to see me in just a minute here, I'm concerned with the same sort of little overhang that I was on the corners of the lips. The upper eyelid hangs over the lower eyelid. And you want to make sure you're getting that construction built as you continue pushing into the face. I also make this cup of the lower eyelid a little bit more rounded that helps me reference the fact that there's an eyeball pushing the skin outwards. Uh, there's, of course, the skull. The eyeball sits in the eye socket of the skull, and the skin kind of hangs over that. And we've got to make sure we're referencing the fact that our face is behaving with anatomical structures underneath. Using this edge loop to kind of trace where my eyebrows go through, that could be another really good landmark to see. And making sure the distance between my eyebrows matches the distance uh, to the eye that I have in the photo. And again, doing some major extrudes here. I can continue making silhouettes across the model. And you'll notice again, I have, I've jumped a face. I have a gap between the extrusions that I've already made and the center line. And I do that for convenience and speed. I find it's easier to um, append these uh, later than it is to put them next to each other side by side and merge. The tool set just works a little bit faster this way. So I can just append between these little gaps and it saves me essentially like half the time. 
Now I've got a little ridge here going through the head that I'm going to have to come in and fix. And again, massaging the jawline a little bit, uh, you want to make sure you're remaining consistent with your photos and making sure your proportions are set. As I extrude up the jawline here, try to make this uh, even with the ear. Uh, just remember, anatomically, the jaw sits uh, in front of the ear. The ear sits behind the jawline. And I only mention that because so many students seem to put the ears just in the wrong spot, too far forward or sometimes too far back. And you can really use your jawline as the perfect sort of marker for uh, where the ear needs to go. Uh, proportionally as well, uh, in terms of its height, the ear should be, uh, the top of the ear should be even with the uh, top of the eyes, or sometimes even the uh, lowest part of the eyebrows, depending on how the face is shaped. And the lower part of the ear lobe should be sort of flush with the bottom part of the nose. And uh, you'll see that in my reference photos here as well. And again, I'm using my multiple views here. As I look in the side view, I'm also looking in the front view to make sure that these vertices are in their exactly needed position. And they might not get there perfectly right away, but I'm going to get them as close as they can so I don't have to do too much manipulation and movement later on. I've essentially created a mask for the front of the face, and I find that to be very helpful if I'm creating contained structures that need to loop and flow uh, as I'm using all quads. Uh, having this uh, looping structure allows me to contain any edge loops that I split just along the face. And if I need to add more definition later, I can do that. So this face is looking pretty good so far. We'll do a quick save out just to make sure our progress is set. Now, as we continue moving here, uh, it's time now, I think, to move into the nose. And I'll extrude down through the center of the nose first, creating my profile in the side view. Now here's why I think the edge extrusion process can be a little bit longer than a box modeling process. Uh, and for me it's that you're, you're putting in one thing at a time and you're moving in one thing at a time. It does allow you to be more precise, but it is sometimes a bit slower. Uh, if you do have interest in learning the box modeling technique, you saw at the beginning of this video series I showed you some links to areas on my website. And I do have a modeling the head using the box modeling technique video series. Uh, you can watch that on YouTube as well, uh, or on my website. So that is uh, KleinMakeLearnGood.com, and you can go to the tutorial section and find the Modeling Ahead video using box modeling. Uh, or you can find the exact same videos on my YouTube page, uh, YouTube.com slash SlurpTheGillman. Once I have this linked up, I will extrude around the edge of my nostrils. Now the nostrils have a particular shape here. They flare a little bit more towards the front. Um, and uh, that creates from the side view here kind of a shape that looks like an airplane wing. Uh, that's how, kind of how I usually describe it. Um, they should also be a little bit lower in the back. Uh, essentially, you should be able to see into the nostrils if you're looking at the nose from the front view or from the side view. It doesn't really matter. Uh, unless you've got some sort of witch-like overhanging nose, it really shouldn't be an issue. Um, so you're trying to make sure that we can see into the center and back of the nose. And that keeps the sides of the nostrils a little bit up and out of the way. Now extrude out the lower part of my nostril here, 